Uh, do you know how any of this goes back together? Um... What is up guys, Wes here with Rocky Mountain and you're watching episode two of Roach to Racing. What's up guys, this is Wes with Rocky Mountain and you are watching episode two of Roach to Racing where we take a clapped out bike and get it race ready. Now, if you guys haven't seen episode one, be sure and go check that out because that's where we intro the build and let you guys know everything that we're doing. But today is teardown day, so I'm super excited. Let's get in the studio and get going. All right guys, so with any used bike, you guys know that there's always some stuff that you have to do before you can go ride it or even race it. And with this bike, we pretty much know that we gotta go completely through this thing, top to bottom, front to back. It needs basically everything. But before we start working on the bike, we gotta get it cleaned up. The previous owner didn't even care to wash this thing before he sold it. Um, and so that's the first thing. So a couple of quick tips before we start washing this thing is it's always a good idea to remove the seat on your dirt bike before you start washing it. I am scared to see what this air filter looks like. That just helps keep the seat dry. It keeps it from getting waterlogged because they take forever to, forever to dry out. <laughs> Not too bad. It's still in one piece. All right, so I've actually got a twin air air box cover that we're gonna install. Uh, and that just keeps water from getting down the air intake track. All right, so basically this is just gonna install right where your air filter goes. Wow, this thing's long-winded. We'll go ahead and install this right now. If the bike ran, I wouldn't do this until we get it to where we're gonna wash it, but uh, since it doesn't, we're gonna be pushing it the whole way. All right, there you have it. No water getting into that air boot. Now, one last thing. I gotta grab my uh, me galoshes and my rubber boots because i don't need these fresh nikes getting dirty i don't want to show those they got pink on them bro bro all right <laughs> okay we're ready to get this thing cleaned up ryan i'm gonna have to have you carry these so you're putting them on i ain't gonna put these on and walk through the warehouse bro <laughs> all right ryan time to get geared up Thanks, buddy. Dude, these things are not skinny enough for me. Dude, Ryan, I can't be seen in these things, bro. Why are you running? Bro, we gotta do it. It's cold out here. Oh, shoot. We just got locked out of the warehouse. <laughs> I left my badge back at my desk and uh, we got locked out. And so we're waiting for somebody to let us in, really. All right, guys, so it's pretty cold out here. It's, uh, well, it says 41 degrees. I was hoping it'd be a little colder so it sounds a little more dramatic, but it feels cold. Pretty much got everything we need. I just gotta get the pressure washer set up and we'll get washing. Riding season's coming, so we gotta get going on this thing. We can't be wasting time. Good day to be washing a bike. We got the steamer going today, boys. Woohoo! All right, so one quick tip before we get going. I always like to start from the bottom up. I'm gonna lay the bike over on the stand and uh, wash the undercarriage first, and then we'll bring it back up on the stand and finish. So I just got done finishing cleaning the underside of the bike. Now I'm gonna get everything on top. But one important thing that a lot of people forget or don't think about is they'll just go to the car wash and spray their bike off. 
and then take it back to their garage and it's still got dirt all over it. A big thing that I found is to use some sort of soap or detergent to make that dirt release from the bike and get it off the bike. So I've got some Maxima Bio Wash and a little scrubber. Right now I'm just gonna go through this bike, give it a quick scrub, and then we'll fire the pressure washer back up and spray this baby off. What the heck? Hey, check this out, dude. This thing's missing a nut. Everybody's like coming unbolted from the airbox. That, my friends, is how you let dirt into your engine. No bueno, boys. My hand's getting tired. Getting a workout today, bud. This part's not that fun. <laughs> I think we should have got this bike a little cheaper based on how dirty it is. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I'm done scrubbing it down. I'm gonna fire the pressure washer up one more time and then we'll be good to go tear this thing down. All right guys, so as you can see, this bike is pretty dang clean now. We've probably spent more time than we even should have cleaning this bike, but I wanted to make sure it was super clean before we tear it down. It's just gonna make our life a lot easier. So now we're ready to get this bike back inside. We're gonna throw it on a stand and completely tear this bike down. We're gonna frame it. So uh, let's get to it. What's up guys, we're back in the studio now and you can see the bike is super clean. It really doesn't show how clapped out this thing is, but we're excited to start tearing this thing down. We're gonna get it on a stand and take it down to the frame. Now I've got Charles here and Charles is actually gonna be doing all the how-to videos that we are gonna be filming with this bike. So you ready, Charles? Yeah, I'm ready, let's do this. What, Charles? You want me exactly how I was? So yeah, you ready, Charles? Yeah, let's do this. So Wes has already come up with a comprehensive list of what we need to do. And the last thing we need to check is the chassis bearings because the easiest time to check it is before they're already apart. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and drain the oil and coolant. All right, let's tear this baby down. Oh, wow. Look at this. What? This crush washer's been reused like a hundred times. This is terrible. Still putting on my gloves. These are supposed to be replaced every time. And I'm gonna drain the coolant. If you don't replace them, the danger is you can strip your case by over tightening it. Oh, I'm spilling. Yeah, I just clean the floors, so be careful. Oh, look at that oil. It's pretty clean. That's what you want your oil to look like. So I got a funny story. On the YZ250 I was rebuilding, I forgot to do this part. I forgot this step. So I pulled the clutch cover off, tipped the motor over, and all the oil came out. Oh, man. Onto the table. That's the worst. Yeah, and I used about every absorbent mat that we had to clean it up. <laughs> it wasn't good. All right, so now we're done with uh, draining the coolant and oil. We've got the bike on the stand. We're ready to tear this thing down, but we've got a few things to cover before you tear down a bike. So uh, before we take it apart, we're gonna start with the bearings. The wheel bearings, we're gonna ro rock them from top to bottom and see if there's any play in the wheel bearings if it moves separate from the axle. We're gonna do the same thing on the front. These feel pretty good to me. We're gonna check these steering stem bearings and how you do that, I go from side to side and you're checking for notching. The other thing, they can be loose. You wanna grab on the bottom and top and try to rock it back and forth. We're checking for any play. There's no play in ours. And the other thing, if your lower fork tube moves separate from the outer. The next thing is our rear shock bearing. So we're gonna do just the similar movements. We're gonna pull up on it. So this does have a little play and a little bit of play is normal. If it's a lot of play, you're definitely gonna wanna replace it. That also checks the linkage bearings at the same time. Now the last one, we're gonna move on to our swing arm bearings. So we're gonna move the swing arm left to right. Even if you're not gonna replace them, it's a good idea to re-grease all these bearings periodically. All right, now let's actually start taking it apart. All right, so my muscles aren't as big as Charles's are. So, big breaker bar. Ah! Yeah, baby! Woohoo! Right. Dude, it's still got the uh, Honda logo on it. Oh, that's legit. Top triple camp. Check that out. We'll have to shine that baby up. I just dumped coolant on my new Nikes, dude. Look at that. Oh, embarrassing. Pink ones? Yeah, my pink ones. Oh, Charles, what do you got? What do you need a hammer for? I need a brad. Don't film this. <laughs> this is like a no-no. <laughs> All right, we're bringing out the big guns. Wait. 
Yeah, dude. All right, so Charles cannot get this Kickstarter off, so we're gonna try a little bit of heat. Does that look badass or what, dude? All right, baby, we're in the home stretch. We're pulling motor mounts right now, and then we can pull this engine out, and we'll be completely disassembled. Woo-wee! That's satchel. Ooh, big muscles working, dude. Don't show that. I'm complimenting his muscles way too much. Hey. You're the one that made me wear this schmedium. Okay, check this out. When your front sprocket's more wavy than the waves at the ocean, it's time to replace it. Follow the manual, they said. Here we go, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so there you have it. We're down to the frame on this 450. Now, we're just over two hours to get this thing down to the frame, but it wasn't too bad. What do you think, Charles? It really wasn't too bad overall. We had a few stuck bolts that gave us problems, but we got them taken care of. Getting the frame or getting the engine out was the hardest part, and it's kind of tricky how you have to tilt it. So if you run into any snags, I mean, this is a lot of motor to be put in this frame. Yeah. So uh, if you're hanging up, just be patient and be careful with it and try not to damage everything. Try not to force it out and you're gonna be okay. All right, so now we're just gonna start banging out some how-to videos. So be sure and check back for those. We appreciate you guys watching and tuning in and we'll see you in episode three. Oh, I don't have my badge. Hopefully you have access to this door. I got access to everything. Even that door down there? Yeah. <laughs> Does your badge work? Yeah. Bro. Oh. So we were taking the transmission apart. Yeah. Third gear never came off. And it's supposed to, it's got a little bit of play. Yeah. But it's supposed to just slide off and it doesn't slide off. So what we're gonna have to do we just need to replace this whole shaft. This thing is roach, dude. It's super roach.